Hello everyone, this is Joris Peels with another edition of 3D Printing News on Peel, courtesy of 3dprint.com. And today we're going to talk to you about something remarkable, and that is the success that 3D Printing is having at Paris Fashion Week. For a very long time, uh, Carbon, uh, together with German production company Uchsler, uh and Adidas uh, were really leading in the, the 3D printing space. They've made a bunch of shoes, limited edition shoes, available worldwide. And uh, they've really put 3D printing on the map using Carbon's technology. And they've produced these shoes in the tens, maybe uh, hundreds of thousands. And everyone else in the shoe industry has kind of flirted with uh, shoes like Nike and, and uh, New Balance, Asics. Lots and lots of brands have had like a one-off kind of a slipper or a shoe and have done some things with them. Uh, or they've been making for a long time custom shoes for athletes. Um, but they haven't put as much attention uh, on it and as much money into it as Uxler and Adidas have. And now we're seeing some things at Paris Fashion Week for some very different brands, uh, which could bring some very, very different attention uh, to uh, 3D printing. Um, now, these brands are not the shoe brands that you may or not know. And they're not even like, you know, athletic footwear brands that you may or may not know, but they're brands that do very different things. So to, at Paris Fashion Week, so far, three 3D printed shoes have been released, which will give us a lot, a lot of attention and maybe a, a huge uh, thing for uh, 3D printing in general. Now, first we have Denmark-based uh, company called Reigns. Reigns makes like these kind of slick rain jackets, very popular a couple of years ago, and is trying to do brand extensions to keep its uh, kind of uh, waning popularity afloat. And what it done, it did to do this is turn to Zellerfeld. Zellerfeld is like a painfully hip kind of brand that's like a kind of like a shoe pre 3D printing service essentially. They they're, they 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 present themselves as being very very technical to the fashion industry and. Um, uh, they, they, they present themselves as being a portal with 3D printed shoes. They typically use TPU and desktop 3D printers, so this would be a very cheap shoe. And what they've managed to do here, which is really interesting, is they managed to encompass air in some way, which of course will reduce the need for foams and is a really USP of uh, material extrusion in shoe 3D printing. It's lower cost, you can use a wider variety of materials, but the key thing is you can encompass air with these uh, boots, and that's a really way, a nice way. Now the shoe itself, you know, it looks like to be TPU, is made by Zellerfeld, uh, and it's called the Pufferbill boot, and it's a one piece, one material shoe, again. Now we don't know how wearable these are, I've tried some of these things on, and they're usually very sweaty and very annoying, um, so I don't know how this will work as an actual shoe, but we'll have to wait. Now, this is not the only 3D printed shoe at uh, Paris Fashion Week, however. Uh, there's another one, and that's by Dior. Um, and that's also another surprising entrant in the shoe category. Dior has shoes, of course, is on a really main thing. Uh, this is appears to be a powder bed fusion shoe. Uh, there's a, uh, I'm not sure which technology exactly, uh, MGF probably, but it could be uh, another powder bed fusion uh, thing uh, as well. It's got a boot and a shoe. They're also one piece, but this is very much uh, the cellular structure. So this is very, very reminiscent of, of the kind of same kind of uh, insole or, or, or lower sole design than we've seen on the Adidas shoes. Only what they've done is they look at the, they talk a, they took in a Darby shoe, which is kind of a classic shoe design, and they've kind of updated it using uh, what would we would soon do either be polyamide PA11 or PA12. Um, we don't know what the partner is, so it could be AirPro, for example. It's a, a service we that's big in France, and they've done they do these million. Uh, um, eyelash uh, things uh, for Chanel. It could also be there's internal capacity at LVMH uh, to do 3D printing like this. It could be an internal LVMH thing because we know they're working on expanding their 3D printing capacity. And we know that other LVMH brands, uh, um, like I think Givenchy lately with some of other have been experimenting with this. Um, so, you know, we don't know who the supplier is, who the material supplier is. This is a cellular structure, so they've experimented with lots of different cellular uh, things. If they get a really nice TPMS structure, they could have a comfortable shoe on their hands. This will have the same problems with debris entering inside of it, of course, that will reduce comfort. And also, there's a problem with, if the impact is considerable, then there's a problem with the, that we don't really, these lattices, that the structure is made out of, kind of tends to collapse, so that it's not very comfortable. So we'll have to see if this, this is comfortable as well, and if it breathes as well. It looks like a very open shoe wonder what happens if it rains and stuff like that and uh, again i don't want to worry about the, the practicality of this but hey we've got rains which is like a kind of cool brand and dior which is a fairly established fashion house 
all working on this together. So this is good. And then the other thing, this is the one that I think is, well, let's say the most aesthetically challenging or the most aesthetically interesting, depending on your point of view. This is why Bolter in collab with Rebulk and HB. Uh, Bolter is a kind of like, um, there's two Dutch designers. They do like kind of very f colorful, fun, kind of Caribbean influences. Very, very hip brand. Uh, very, very newish uh, brand as well. Uh, and they're called Bolter. And, uh, you know, they can get them at the right place. It's that kind of like small capsule brand that kind of went global kind of thing. With, you know, some new ideas about sustainability, showcasing the Caribbean, and these bright colors. Not, none of this muted kind of beige and black. This is like, boom, in your face stuff, you know? Um, and that's what Bolter does. Um, now, they then work with Reebok, which is, of course, great, because Reebok in itself hasn't really done a lot of work uh outside of um uh you know outside of prototyping with 3d printing so, so this would be a great thing for Reebok, Reebok to get his feet wet and of course this is great news for hp um this could be hp polypropylene or mgf we're not entirely sure which of the materials but this is again great news for hp they managed to get in on the game so we've got three different shoes three very different shoes if we look at them uh, again really closely look at this bolter thing which is like wow you know this is very colorful very in your face very kind of web kind of like aquaman shoes kind of thing then we've got the very understated very powder bed fusiony looking kind of dior shoe and then uh, we've got this kind of rain shoe which is a bit, you know much more plasticky looking but also kind of like a more cellular layer like object these are basically also if you look at it the space age kind of natural form layer showing kind of design plus the cellular design and plus the out here kind of like sculptural design. These are the three main categories we're seeing as well. This is a nice coincidence uh, uh, if you're, if you're uh, new to th shoe 3D printing. These are the same three categories we see. So this is really good to know and see. Now, what does this mean for us? This means that shoe 3D printing is now something that everyone at Paris Fashion Week is talking about. Once is, you know, once is a coincidence, but three times is something that people will talk about. Now, maybe this will either mean that everyone considers shoe 3D printing to be something that people did and, yeah, it just it now died. Or it could be a critical mass moment where all these brands are going to reach out to companies like Zellerfeld or, or, or to reach out to HP or AirPro or other service bureaus to try to get shoes printed. So this could be a really watershed moment for shoe 3D printing. We're not sure uh, yet what it would mean. And also it could mean that the shoes can be now be made in the European Union or in the United States out of one piece, out of one material. And if someone cracks this, it could be a really cost-effective way to, to make something uh, without uh, much in the way of uh, manual labor. So that could be a really good thing, and this would be a watershed moment for that. Anyway, my name is Joris Peels, and this is another edition of um, 3D printing news on Peel. Have a great day.